All right, so uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, we're at the, at the time, so I will get started really quickly um, and uh, jump in. So um, my uh, name is Robinson Tryon. I'm a QA engineer with the Document Foundation, and uh, I dabble in other things, uh, proofreading stuff in English, um, because people think I'm good at it for some reason, uh, <laughs> release engineering, um, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but I also uh, volunteer and do a number of things uh, promoting LibreOffice use uh, in the United States. Um, I'm big about Document Freedom Day. In fact, I brought some stickers um, from our last Document Freedom Day to bribe all of you with. So even if uh, the content of my talk isn't to your liking, I have stickers to bribe you. So. Um, and because everyone always asks, I used to live there and I live here now. Um, and I'm not actually a cowboy, but for some reason we talk about wrangling bugs. So there's that. Um, so my talk today um, is about uh, bug tracking, uh, about uh, Bugzilla, and um, I wanted to give uh, you, I know um, some of you are rather technical, um, uh, some of you aren't, um, but hopefully there'll be something uh, in here that, that all of you will find interesting about um, how we use Bugzilla with QA um, and what we're doing to make it easier for people to contribute um, to our tooling, um, which of course then is a sort of uh, side effect or I guess knock-on effect uh, in terms of helping out LibreOffice itself. So um, uh, Bugzilla, so the first LibreOffice bug that I could track down was filed a little bit before actually um, the creation of LibreOffice by about a month. Uh, and <laughs> so, uh, so this is uh, this, this crash in Office Suite um, and this is actually sort of maybe classified as a predecessor, a Go OO, which is the, one of the predecessors or parents to the LibreOffice project. Um, so these are our humble beginnings of, of where we began um, um, with, with QA and with, with bug tracking. Um, when we started out as a project, LibreOffice, um, we had basically no infrastructure, at least. Um, I'm sure someone's going to raise their hand and tell me about that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we, we, we really benefited from uh, free desktop. Uh, org, who gave us uh, mailing lists, um, uh, source code repositories, um, Wikispace, um, and, uh, and a bug tracker, which was very helpful at the time to have someone else deal with those things uh, so that everything else that needed to be, to, uh, to be addressed um, could, be, could be addressed um, in terms of uh, dealing with a new project. Um, so, uh, you know, free desktop ex still exists, the bug tracker still exists. Um, it's uh, very stable. Um, and uh, it, uh, it continues along, though there are several issues and several reasons why we decided then to migrate away from uh, free desktop and to explore uh, our uh, new opportunities, new things we could do. So we have many other projects uh, um, that, that, that we shared, uh, th this instance of Bugzilla um, at free desktop. Um, there are about 130 projects. <laughs> um, here are just a few of them and the list sort of just goes on forever. Um, and you probably recognize many of these, um, probably don't recognize some of the, of the other ones. Um, but Free Desktop provides a, an amazing service, uh, but um, there were some limitations um, that we had. So for example, we had just one little slice. Um, so we had LibreOffice, we had one project out of 130, and we included a lot of content um, all lumped into what was, I, I think the terminology is product, but basically one slot under, underneath Bugzilla. And this limited us a lot. It uh, meant that we couldn't uh, uh, expand and uh, accurately track what we were doing. Everything including our infrastructure, um, some continuous integration infrastructure, um, two other uh, products that we had, an Impress Remote, um, which some of you might have seen. Uh, I don't think Michael used one, but he's used one in the past with a little Android remote for controlling presentations. Um, and then our Android viewer um, were all lumped in with bugs inside LibreOffice itself. So this uh, complicated things when we were trying to figure out um, uh, in all kinds of information, including uh, statistics. Um, also, we uh, didn't have our own administrators in there. We couldn't delegate um, user management, couldn't de delegate roles. So this was, you know, uh, got to be a little bit of a, of a headache. Um, yeah, limitations on values, um, and it was difficult just to concentrate on our document foundation bugs. So um, we developed a special front end, actually, a separate piece of software to make it easy for people to report bugs into, into uh, LibreOffice. Um, and we faced some other hurdles um, in terms of changing the tooling um, and uh, some of our goals to make it easy for people to report bugs inside LibreOffice and pass along information, such as version information, a component that you're testing, and so forth. Uh, we also got 
very large. We, we were a big project, obviously, when people talk about free software and the free software environment. Uh, LibreOffice is, uh, I would say, made at the top of the list, uh, but it's up there. Um, in fact, it's great going to conferences um, where people are so excited to see us um, and they're excited that, that we're being used. Um, but of course, because we're very popular and because we have so many users, uh, we do see a giant number of bugs. In fact, in the last uh, few years, we were, <laughs> we were almost two thirds of the resources of the uh, free desktop bug tracker. So it was very clear that we needed to move along and have our own um, Bugzilla, our own instance where we could track bugs. So we migrated. Uh, it took place this year. Um, it gave us flexibility, allowed us to add um, as many admins as we wanted. So if anyone out there wants to help us administrate Bugzilla, we're always looking for new, new blood. Um, we will delegate you um, responsibilities, of course. Uh, and uh, and we, can, we can do things. So for example, when we were trying to release new versions of uh, uh, LibreOffice, uh, sometimes we had to track down one of a short list of people who could say, add a new version to the bug tracker, or can make little tweaks. And now it's great, so we can actually um, accurately uh, connect the users that need privileges with those who have them. It's, it's marvelous. Um, it also means that statistics, so um, here, for example, you can see statistics about just TDF uh, projects. So before, again, we were buried in 130 different projects. Um, now it's just uh, LibreOffice uh, and related projects. And in the future, we're going to narrow that down even further, provide specific statistics. So things we've improved. Um, so I mentioned, and I know I'm sort of going at a breakneck pa uh, pace, but I think I have uh, a bunch of slides in a short period of time, so I'm going to hurry on through. Wa wave your hand if uh, you'd like me to explain something a little, little more in depth. Um, but we, uh, we are now able to use a built-in capability of Bugzilla. So Bugzilla Forms. Yes, Core. Ah, not as loud, not as fast. No, no. Oh. Slower, maybe. okay. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. It's, it's, if you have time. Yeah, well, oh, okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll go a little slower and then I'll jump through. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. Um, so, yes, so um, we now have an interface, um, these Bugzilla guided forms, uh, that replaces our old uh, Bugzilla submission assistant. So that was something that we tacked on to Bugzilla because we didn't have direct control. So now that we have direct control, we can use what's baked into Bugzilla um, and can uh, make it easier. So you can see there's some uh, helpful hints here. This should be for the exact version. So this is the precise version that you're running. And what's great is that now we have integration with LibreOffice so that if you are running um, a testing version of LibreOffice, for example, you don't have to be very careful about copying that version in to report a bug. You can just go into the menu and click get, uh, Give Feedback, I believe it is, and that information will be pasted into your bug report. Um, so this is, this is very helpful for us, and in fact, one of the, my goals in the future is to include more information so that it's sort of a bulletproof method for users to interact with us. Um, we fixed a lot of different things. I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but um, we've been clear about licensing, uh, making sure that people are cognizant that, for example, if they're attaching information, if they're attaching a document, that we're going to use that for testing, but other people could also read it. So please do not attach your invoices, your bank statements, um, your resumes. That was something someone didn't want to have. There are lots of different things that people have attached publicly um, that maybe seems absurd, um, but um, we still get removal requests even though we have these red messages. So uh, <laughs> we, we will continue to, to try to improve that. Um, we also are doing, um, I think, some, some neat things about state. So for example, in the past when someone said, um, you know, here's a, here's a request, um, you know, here's a bug I have, and we wanted to, to ask them for more information, we would put the bug into a particular state, so the need info state, and then we would write them a message. Now this, uh, as you can imagine, took a lot of time because we took the time to write the message and put it into state, multiplied by not every bug, but many bugs. So what's great is that one of the um, first things we did actually, one of the first things uh, that we, we modified was to make it automatic. So there's an automatic message that appears when your bug is in need info state that says, we're waiting on you. <laughs> and this is, uh, I think, very helpful, um, sort of optimizing one of the most common cases. Uh, we also made it very prominent that you probably want to file a bug about LibreOffice or about the Impress Remote. Um, the other uh, projects are there, but, uh, but uh, you, uh, you, uh, you can file, but those, of course, are the most I prominent ones. read that upper part as a banner ad and 
Ah, that's fair. Ah, uh, well, there you go. You can just control F. It's fine, you know. So. We'll put some arrows maybe in. Is that, will that help? Yeah. Um, we've made a number of other changes as well. Um, so um, we've tried to customize uh, the error information to make it abundantly clear. So for example, if you're trying to change the fields to some value you shouldn't or you're not allowed to, we'll be very specific about that, um, especially because for many people, English is not their first language. So being as clear as we can, um, I think is very helpful. Uh, so in terms of modifying uh, Bugzilla, in terms of contributing, there are many different ways to do so. Uh, one way is to modify extensions. So we have a few extensions installed. Um, we have a weekly bug summary, for example, we use every week for bug summary, and it's a crazy idea. Um, and, uh, but we use this um, to uh, collect some information, uh, some statistics. And this is actually one place where it would be great to get more statistics. It would be great to um, modify this, uh, this extension, um, make it into uh, a more customizable tool. So in terms of bringing more people in, this would be a great place uh, to see more development if someone's looking for a project. Um, right now, we're actually modifying the core of Bugzilla a lot. Um, uh, it's, uh, basically, we have a lot of TDF, a lot of our project-specific modifications. But we do, of course, want to share our modifications with others, and extensions are one of the best ways to do that. Um, so yes, um, basically, just a little more information about how you can learn and how you can get started. So very quickly, um, for those of you out there who don't install Bugzilla um, every week, um, which is probably most of you. Um, we are using a version of Bugzilla 4.4. Um, if you want to grab my uh, presentation afterwards, there's a hyperlink to documentation about how you can install it. We've done several things, um, perhaps because we like to do things our own way, um, to modify those installation instructions. So we use a different web server. Uh, we use a different database. Um, <laughs> we uh, deploy a Bugzilla with automation tools for our own convenience. Um, and we store a lot of our data inside Git, inside a version control repository. The reason there uh, being so that we can share a lot of information and keep track of who's modifying what. Um, this might make it a little more complicated, um, but it does make things easier for us. Um, so one of the things that um, I'm hoping to do in the future um, is to simplify uh, the installation process. Um, we have uh, some easy collaboration tools, but right now I am uh, drafting documentation, improving documentation, um, that will cover all aspects of these contribution. Uh, so whether it's installation, um, basic development, um, there's a lot of information about Bugzilla in general online, um, but I of course want to make this specific to our Bugzilla because of our tweaks. Uh, so one of the challenges that we currently face um, is the fact that we're using a legacy database, a legacy version of Bugzilla. Um, a, 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 we're using a modern version of Bugzilla that has been upgraded um, all the way since 2003. So I believe there are some, there are some modifications and um, pieces of the database that may have followed us through all these upgrades since 2003. Um, and as a result, um, we have a very large database um, that has some unique and sort of crafty and interesting things. As a result, um, when we're testing and when I would like to give people a database to test um, locally so that if they want to uh, give contributions, they can ensure that their changes won't break our changes, um, what um, I'd like to do is to modify that database. So this is one of the challenges is to craft a database that is similar to ours that has, for example, holes in it where um, we are missing bugs because we shared the uh, Bugzilla with several other projects and then deleted their bugs out. Um, but yet make sure that the database is representative of what we're testing with attachments, um, bug change data, um, and various user accounts. So let's say that you've got Bugzilla installed. I know I'm sort of running through this, but we have a short period of time. So. Um, so let's say you've uh, now gotten Bugzilla installed, um, you've read some code, you want to add a feature. Um, what, sh what should you know? Reading through the Bugzilla documentation is helpful. Um, talking to the um, Bugzilla mailing list is, is also very helpful. Um, there are some interesting nuances, I think, about Bugzilla that you need to know. Um, one thing, for example, I was surprised to hear is that Bugzilla wants you to modify the existing pieces rather than, say, adding new pieces, for example, a field. So I think there's some uh, perhaps interdependencies and other pieces. So if you want to change something, they'd like you to repurpose an existing field. 
This is, uh, I think, a little bit novel for some people. They might like to add a fresh. Um, this might scare away some new contributors. Um, also, uh, Bugzilla, <laughs> the way it's designed, I think is uh, because of its history being developed uh, over so many years, um, it can seem a little out of date. Um, some features aren't abs abstracted out uh, properly. When I was looking at m making some modifications to labels, uh, to values, um, some of them are spread out all over the code. Um, and this is, uh, can be a little challenging, I think, for newcomers um, because when we modify our own Bugzilla, uh, we don't want to make massive changes against upstream because this means that we would have to forward port, we'd have to carry those changes forward um, every time we upgrade Bugzilla. And I know that this community has a long experience forward porting changes against an upstream source. <laughs> Uh, so, um, metadata is another piece we need to address. We store metadata in three different places, two configuration files and in the database. Um, and this is another piece that I think has been challenging for people. Um, it was, for me at least, it was just a, um, learning where pieces are supposed to go. Um, so, uh, keeping track is a little bit um, frustrating, but we've tried to configure our Bugzilla to make it easier for people um, to make changes. Uh, changing the rules, yes. So we also use Bugzilla in a slightly different fashion than some other projects. For example, we've added um, a custom component, um, this uh, UX advise component, if you guys have ever assigned bugs to that, uh, that field. And it's basically a way for us to put bugs into a need info state, a request state, um, a looking for in input from uh, the UI, the UX team. Uh, so if you are looking to contribute, if you're looking to help us develop, it's somewhat important to understand, I think, the processes of each of our teams so that you can understand how we have modified Bugzilla uh, for our needs. So basically, you know, learn the backstory. Um, contributions. So there are lots of different ways uh, to help us with Bugzilla. So coding, of course, is one of them, uh, but there are lots of different non-coding ways as well. I'm sure there are several people out there who maybe would like to contribute, um, but they either um, aren't a programmer or would like to leave the programming at work and do something different when they uh, go home. So um, having clear proposals for improvement um, that considers how we see our UI um, and how we will implement the, the changes. So one issue with Bugzilla that I see um, is that the interface can be very confusing to users. Um, it's one of the feedback, a piece of feedback that I've received several times. Um, so from a, if you're from a very technical background, I think it's much more um, uh, it's compelling, it's, it's much clearer. Um, but for many of our users, it's very complicated. So input on how you can change Bugzilla, provide useful um, either warning messages or information messages, I think would be one of the most effective ways uh, for us to upgrade, uh, for us to um, improve Bugzilla, um, because at least in QA, we spend a lot of our time communicating with users, trying to explain to them why we uh, configure bugs, why we um, specify uh, changes to a bugs in the bug tracker. So a simpler communication with users, I think, would be very effective. Um, there are several changes um, that we would love to see in Bugzilla itself uh, that could be done in the upstream project as well. So several of these, uh, I guess all of these would require <laughs> programming experience. Um, but the benefit of this, of course, is that if we could uh, see these changes happen in upstream Bugzilla, um, then several other projects would benefit. So for example, um, attachments. Um, many people attach compressed files that contain test files, images, maybe, et cetera. And it'd be very convenient for us. It would help us uh, speed up our work if we could see those listed individually inside Bugzilla. Um, similarly, uh, I get requests. Yeah, sorry. Also, it'd be nice if we could some Yeah. It's just a pain as to, to what? To, to like open a file or okay, so you, you banning types. Yeah. Oh, so you you oh to ban those types. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, I I guess I mean seven zip. So you're just saying it's it's a pain to open them, or what was the? Yeah. There are so many different formats that yeah. currently allow and users use the wide range. Okay. And you as a developer have to have them all of them installed so that you can. Sure. You get access to the sure. Yeah, and I guess it would be great, I think, to address that on the back end, right? So if, for example, we could have the server um, 
at least, um, I, you know, it could be just in time, I guess, but basically the server deal with the decompression um, and listing, then for the, from, from the developer's we'll perspective. We'll search in the zip files, which will sometimes be a great thing. Sure, for sure. Ports and stuff like yeah, that. sure. I think one of, the, one of the things that, I guess, from my perspective in terms of improving Bugzilla is that several of these issues have been, have been longstanding. Um, they've existed inside upstream Bugzilla for quite some time. And um, I know it's a similar thing with LibreOffice. It's about finding the resources, the time, uh, the money um, to go forward and, and actually uh, make these changes. Uh, so right now, our current plans um, are uh, to make some, some small changes. Um, we want to um, make some further restrictions to fields, um, who um, is assigned, QA context and such, so that, again, ordinary users um, I don't want to say it's uh, malicious. Uh, they just don't know that <laughs> they shouldn't be changing these fields. They shouldn't be uh, modifying the bug in particular ways. Um, uh, we're going to upgrade to Bugzilla 5.0, which will give us some more APIs. Um, unfortunately, it won't give us some of the great features I listed before um, that, we, that we'd like about attachments. Um, but will give us, um, I think, some, some easier statistics um, and some uh, basically better uh, user interface. Um, there are definitely a lot of future ideas, a lot of uh, ideas that we've brainstormed for the future of Bugzilla. And if any of these in particular um, uh, appeals to you or seems like something you'd like to work on, I'd love to talk to you um, because we have a finite amount of time in QA that we spend both on uh, improving Bugzilla, updating Bugzilla, and of course dealing with bugs themselves. Um, so one more person into the team can make a big difference. So. Um, one of the ideas was adding recruitment language to Bugzilla. So one of the biggest places that we recruit new users to join the QA team um, is from Bugzilla and from the user lists. So if we see someone who wrote a very competent bug report um, or someone who's asking the right questions, it would be great for us to be able to um, uh, paste in some information directly, um, maybe send them an automatic email um, that, would, that would bring them a little closer to joining us. Um, uh, distributable Bugzilla VM, uh, one of the ideas because the installation of Bugzilla is a little complicated with all of our modifications. It'd be great to have something we just hand to people. Um, they'd boot it up and they'd already be ready to start making changes to the code. Uh, guided forms, so I mentioned that we have guided forms, uh, basically a Fisher-Price-like interface, a hand-holding interface that makes it easy for people to file new bugs. Um, I'd love to, again, parse more information make it uh, more automatic how we deal with information coming from uh, LibreOffice intelligently. And I'd like to add some dashboards. So we aggregate a bunch of information, but I'd like to provide some graphs um, and other information online about um, outstanding information, backport requests. And the backport requests sometimes um, are not on people's uh, radar. And so that way we could see what bugs people have requested um, to be backported. So basically, bugs that are fixed in master, um, but that people would like to see backported onto stable branch of, of LibreOffice um, or you know, the, uh, the, uh, one, of, one of the existing uh, release series. And of course, for QA, um, it would be great to see, um, again, a interface so that we could keep track of any gardening tasks, any cleanup tasks, um, things that we shouldn't see, like there should never be commas in the whiteboard field. It'd be great to see all of that uh, visually so that we would know when we should go through and, and clean up those, uh, these particular details. Um, have a whole bunch of ideas about how we can speed up bug triage um, and respond to questions from users. Um, but uh, of course, the, uh, the biggest piece here is to recruit people who are excited about making changes to Bugzilla, um, who are interested in helping us improve the documentation um, of uh, how we use Bugzilla and uh, improve our processes, um, because that's how we have time to work on some of these exciting features um, rather than working on just the regular bug triage. So I think that's my, uh, that's my talk. Any questions about Bugzilla? No. Matthew, any? <laughs> yeah. So you're in Bugzilla for QAQPT. I what? Yes. So you're using Bugzilla. Bugzilla, that's right, yeah. Did anyone consider using Zero by Alessia to manage QAQPT? Zilla? Zilla. It's a, oh, zero. Okay, yeah. Um, I. 
Yeah, so our first big step this year, as I mentioned, was migrating the bugs to our own bug tracker. That was, it was a big step, um, took, a, took a certain amount of planning, um, and it, it went very well, which was great, I think. Um, so we moved, uh, we sort of duplicated the database, the Bugzilla database and the content, and set it up, and now have been, uh, have been working with our own instance. Um, I, I do think that there are several features that Bugzilla doesn't contain, and again, due to the age of the, um, of the source tree and perhaps the current level of development, uh, that we are not seeing uh, some of those new features being implemented quickly. So, um, you know, I do think there are other bug trackers that offer a sort of compelling set of features. Um, I think for some of them, I'm, I, and I'm not as familiar with them. I don't know if, uh, you know, developers are as well, but it, it, it's something we could consider in the future. I know that, um, I think it was Wikimedia moved a whole bunch of their infrastructure to Fabricator, um, and they were talking about that at, at Fosnum, I think, this year, and, um, it seemed, you know, interesting. Um, it seemed like that was a very large amount of work um, migrating to a different system. Uh, and, but I think it could be something that we could look into in the future um, because it, you know, if, if we could move to a system that was more agile, um, that was easier to modify, um, that could save us energy um, and could make us more effective in the long term. Um, so if, if you have experience with Azure or other, other tools, I'd love to talk with you about you know, what you think, uh, how we could, for example, structure um, LibreOffice project and components, and maybe some of our other tools. So we, we have other things, uh, uh, libraries, for example, from the document liberation project we store in Bugzilla. So if you have some suggestions about what, what would be a possibility, I'd love to, to hear from you about how we could use that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah, later, yeah. But, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that, that might be sort of a, you know, a deal breaker for us um, because I think for a lot of people, we, um, you know, we, as much as possible, like to use, other, you know, free open source software projects. Um, and there are the bug trackers, though, too, as I said, like, like Fabricator, and so that there are other possibilities in terms of um, using other tools that might be more effective. Right now, Bugzilla works for us, I think, and offers a number of great features and has the possibility to be expanded for more. So, you know, again, I, I, um, I've been, I guess, uh, shepherding a lot of these changes and, 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 and addressing a lot of my, myself, um, and I am really happy, I'm actually looking forward to, to bring more people into that mix and, uh, you know, not only having their help in implementing what I've looked at and what other people have suggested, but what they suggest, because I'd like pe more people to feel like they have ownership over the bug tracker. Uh, it's a piece of shared infrastructure for the entire project. And uh, again, hopefully our changes will benefit not only us, but, but other projects. So, yeah. Any other questions about LibreOffice, Bug Tracker, Bugzilla, QA? Okay, well, uh, well thank you. I have uh, still a bunch of uh, Document Freedom Day stickers, as I said. So um, if you'd like to come grab those from me or have questions, um, I will be... Uh, be around all week, of course. So. Uh, on the, oh, well, there's no walls on these stickers, but um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure to have some next time. So, and we, I think we need to name the walrus too. So, for those who don't know, the um, a lot of QA um, um, iconography and uh, a couple T-shirts um, and my talks often have a have a walrus on them, which came out of uh, some discussion we had in the QA uh, channel, which <coughs> I like to think is the the most fun LibreOffice uh, IRC channel, but. I think sometimes the, the dev, uh, dev IRC channel gives us a run for our money, so. But uh, we have a sort of, yeah, mini mascot walrus, so. Awesome. <laughs>